I certainly didn't see myself as a math prodigy, and if you had asked me how I managed to stay afloat in accelerated math classes for three years at Sinaloa and on into high school, I would have shrugged my shoulders. I think it was a matter of being in the right place at the right time, far more than any mathematical prowess. After all, my initial math class that first semester in Simi was not an advanced course. It was only after scoring A's on my first few tests that my teacher, feeling I was not challenged by the standard curriculum, transferred me into an advanced math class. Once making that leap, I found myself competing with the brightest and best mathematical minds in my grade level. In the eighth grade, I took Algebra I, and in the ninth grade, I took Geometry. A year later, at the high school, I took Algebra II. It seemed I was always a year ahead of most of my classmates. Of all my math teachers, I best remember Dennis Rast, who taught me in my 10th grade year. Mr. Rast was a favorite of the students, a young, smart, affable man with a birthmark on his scalp that left a small white patch of hair above his left ear. This was almost unnoticeable from the front, but from the back, it looked as though somebody had clapped him on the head with a chalkboard eraser. Mr. Rast struck me as a firebrand, passionate about mathematics and intent on desensitizing his students to its terrors. One of his primary tools in his quest to make math understandable was solving written equations on the blackboard. He would step to the blackboard and begin writing a simple equation, something all of us could understand. Then he would add a number at some point in the mathematical expression and show how its placement impacted numbers on both sides of the equal sign. He would begin this in a small way that was easy for the class to follow and make the equation more and more complex, carrying us along through his computation. Mr. Rast's love of numbers always came alive at the blackboard. He had a characteristic way of solving equations at a furious pace. He always ended these mathematical wind sprints with a flourish, tossing his piece of chalk out the door, which he seemed to leave open in every sort of weather for exactly this purpose. We students sometimes joked that a casual passerby, if told about Mr. Rast's chalk pitching, could spot his classroom by counting the white fragments in the grass near the door. I was far from the smartest student in the class, and I struggled to keep up with the coursework. The algebra was tough enough, but in the spring semester that year, Mr. Rast spent several weeks giving us a grounding in trigonometry as well. He also introduced us to logarithms, and the use of a slide rule, a tool that would become outmoded a few years later as pocket calculators became available. My clearest memory of the class was the Olivetti Programma 101, a crude prototype of a desktop computer that the math department acquired that winter. Looking back on it now, it was little more than an elaborate adding machine. With its limited memory, the machine utilized a rudimentary programming language. Through simple if-then statements, commands could be keyed into the machine to govern the sequence of basic math operations. The Programma 101 could be prompted to add, subtract, multiply, and divide on cue, and to print out the results of these computations on a narrow strip of paper that emerged like the tape from a common adding machine. Mr. Rast spent an entire class period demonstrating this new electronic marvel for us. He then announced that any students who were interested 
would be allowed to schedule time on the computer during our lunch hours for a few weeks. Mr. Rast loved math and science in every respect, so his enthusiasm for this prototype computer was easy to understand. I think he recognized that computers in time would play an important function in the lives of his students. It was 1968, after all, and computers were coming into vogue in the public consciousness. Many movies and TV shows of the day depicted computers as glittering behemoths, huge wall-sized cabinets arrayed with flashing lights and reels of magnetic tape. The Programma 101 was not the only computer that figured into students' lives at Sami High School that year. Later that spring, flyers were posted announcing a computer date dance. Tickets had to be purchased several days in advance, and they came with a questionnaire to be filled out, detailing each student's hobbies, interests, likes, and dislikes. This information was key-punched onto data cards, then fed into a mainframe computer programmed to provide each participant with a short list of three prospective dates whose interests were deemed an appropriate match. Considering Mr. Rast's affinity for computer innovations, I was not surprised to hear him talking about the dance in class one day. This may be the wave of the future as far as dating goes, he said, holding up the dance flyer. When you grow up, you may try a computer dating service, but next week you can test out the technology right here on campus. The first class meeting after the dance, Mr. Rast raised the issue again. Standing at the blackboard, he had just finished working out an equation. He turned from the board the chalk still in his hand. A show of hands, please. How many of you went to the computer date dance this past weekend? Nobody moved. I'm sure I saw you there, Mr. Rast said, pointing to the young man in the back of the class whose name I could never remember. What did you think of your date, Mr. Rast said. Did the computer make a good match? The boy began to blush. He wasn't the sort to talk about his dates. Okay, he's shy, Mr. Rast said. Anybody else? I only met two of the girls on my printout, another boy said, raising his hand, and I didn't think either one of them had much in common with me. For example, Mr. Rast prodded. Well, I put in my profile that I like skateboarding, basketball, and restoring old cars. Both of the girls I got matched with are bookworms and have no interest in cars or sports. That's interesting, Mr. Rast said. I thought all three of the young ladies on my dance list were very close matches. Strong skills in math and science. Wait a minute, another student called out. You're a teacher. How did you get computer matches at a student dance? Well, Mr. Rast said, the faculty chaperones are supposed to mix and mingle with the students at the dance. Besides, he said, tossing his piece of chalk out the open door, how else could I test the accuracy of the computer algorithms for matching personality traits and basic compatibility?